Welcome to Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring the sports lifestyle and action on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster. And I'm Melissa McCurley. Welcome to this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. All the pickleball on and off the court. Coming up on this week's show, our cover story focuses on the growth of pickleball being exercised by corporations using the sport for healthy outings. So it was just a really great opportunity to try something new and get out of the office for the afternoon. I think they did a great job. They laid it all out really well for everybody. Then they would come behind and check, fix a couple little things, and it was fun because people were starting to change and get better already. Our pro player profile features a tennis pro and pickleball pro balancing family life with teaching and competing at a high level and making noise on the woman's side of the APP Tour. I think you'll see more and more tennis players still play both but gravitate more towards pickleball now, I hope. There's, there's room in your heart for both. I can, I'm a, a true testament to that. The World Pickleball Championships $100,000 Pro-Am and Team event this week at Punta Gorda's Pickleplex with all the top pros. Just because of how the schedule works, there are some kind of interesting pairings. Um, we're going to definitely see some ones that we haven't seen before in normal tournaments, which I think is really cool. So I think there's going to be a lot of interesting matchups, and a lot of this game is about matchups. So um, I'm just kind of excited for my team to, to do something new and uh, kind of experiment with new partnerships. I think this is this unique idea of this team competition um, is going to showcase some some different players and, and really be great exposure for the sport of pickleball in general. And we'll help improve your game with the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week from national champion and host of the upcoming Delray Beach Pickleball Open, Steve Kennedy. All this and more to come on the Coulter Homes Inside World Pickleball Show. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking your number one choice for home loans and high interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at pgavillageverano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at pgavillageverano.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. on the court. Inside World Pickleball, we had our first corporate outing led by Scott Golden and Megan Hall with United Materials, and they had a blast out there. And what a way to start off. None of them ever knew anything about pickleball before they came out today. They all left addicted, as we knew they would. Man, they all picked it up very quickly. I think it's a game that you can pick it up quick. There's so many levels that play, so I was happy to see them enjoying themselves and them really learning how to play the game. I have never played pickleball before. And when they told us that we were doing this, I was in question. But I'll tell you that I truly enjoyed it. I, I think it's a sport that you want to do more. I want to get better at it, but uh, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was great, and uh, I love the competition. But I also love the, love, love the, the theme of the game and the, pe the pace of the game. So uh, it was great. The main thing me and Megan wanted to get them doing is just hitting the ball over the net and having fun. And I think we accomplished that. We did a couple drills and some fun competitive things. Uh, but the group itself is a fun group, and I think that whole group is going to be addicted. I hear once you play once, like you never want to stop because it's just so much fun. And I think probably a couple of us caught the bug today. We know the addiction because the minute you play, because within 15 minutes you guys were playing games. 
were. It was fun. You guys were great in terms of like teaching how and breaking it down step by step. And um, I think the hardest part was learning the points. But I think we all caught on at the end. So. That's some good shots over there, Don. So I think you might have a career in pickleball. I'm very competitive. Oh, okay. So, so that's eight points. So that was eight plus one. And even, you know, we had the gentleman out there that lost an arm in a motorcycle accident. We talked to him. It was amazing to see he had a hard serve. And now that it's official, we can all play the drop serve. So what do you think about that? Did you see a lot of them? Were you teaching the drop serve yet? Yes, I think some of them really preferred the drop serve. Um, Dawn, she was trying the drop serve. I don't think it was working for her. I said, try out of the air. It was much better. She got it much deeper into the into the service box. So I think that it just depends. It's it's to each his own, and um, you just have to give it a try and see what works for you. I was watching Josh a little bit. You know, obviously, him only having his right arm there, it can be a little tricky at first, but he's a fighter and an overcomer. You can tell that his nature, He he's going to be a really good player when he puts his mind to it, for sure. Oh, I loved it, man. It's a great game. You know, we came out here with the whole crew, and uh, they wanted to do a fun activity that was COVID-friendly, so we started playing pickleball. It's the first time I've seen it or played it. I really loved it. I fell in love with it right away. It's a great game. You looking forward to playing more with pickleball? Is it getting into it? Yeah, I've got four boys, and uh, they'd love this. We play ping pong at home a lot, and uh, they haven't gotten into tennis yet, but this is the perfect in-between, so... Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It looks like they had a good time. What do you think? They had a great time, Carl. Everybody had a great time. Some guys were coming in just smashing it like they played a lot of, you know, uh, maybe they had tennis background or something. They were just crushing it. And uh, the other gals had a lot of fun, too, touching it over. It great. Hey, thanks for putting on. You guys were great today for the, for the corporate clinic. Everybody enjoyed it. So this could be a, a whole new uh, line of business out there for companies to forget the golf and forget the tennis. Let's, let's, let's do pickleball outings. World Pickleball, this week's player profile, Megan Hall, who has just moved up in the APP rankings to number two in the world. So that's very impressive, Megan. I know it's an early start to the season, but you've been playing tournaments and so forth for quite a while. But let's first go right to your, your origin of when you started playing pickleball yourself. So I started playing about uh, almost two years ago. I had a baby and I needed to get the weight off. Um, I actually suffered from some arthritis. Um, postpartum so I, I couldn't play tennis which is my first uh, passion and someone introduced me to pickleball so I was able to to play that's how I started a lot of people talk about it because it is a very fit sport people getting out getting the activity even during a pandemic it's been growing and so forth so you found it yourself as a way to get out get some exercise and uh, be able to work it but now you've improved your game where you're competing at a high level yeah, I started playing tournaments about a year ago with Scott. He asked me to play um, actually almost a year ago in the Winter Naples Classic. Um, so it's really started from there. COVID hit and I felt like I was just gaining momentum, but we started training, started playing more, um, drilling more, and uh, hopefully I can continue to do that so I can see more improvements in my game. You know, one thing people don't realize, they just walk out and they start playing, but it does take practice to move yourself up to a competitive level. If you want to get good at anything, you have to put the time in on the court, the buckets, the balls, working on your game. Coming out of tennis, how was that transition for you? I think the bang bang game was very easy for me. I think the forehands, the backhands, the volleys, those are all natural things for tennis players. Um, but I think where 
us tennis players need help and need the drilling is really it, at the kitchen. Um, so just putting in those reps, uh, drilling, you know, hundreds of dinks, cross courts down the line, uh, third shot drops. Those are the unnatural things for us tennis players, hitting soft um, with finesse. And so uh, doing that consistently, you definitely need to drill. Yeah, I've, uh, being a tennis player myself, I've seen the same thing coming in. I played with a new tennis player yesterday. He came out, just start banging away, man, serving in volley. And, you know, whoa, slow down there, cowboy. But, uh, but the dink game, the patience in pickleball is the unique part of the sport. Yeah, it's it's unique. It's uncomfortable coming from tennis, as you know, um, but it's necessary, uh, especially as you get higher and higher in level in the game. I think that patience uh, is is what you need. Discipline in in the patience. If you see Ben Johns, if you see Simone, they're 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 waiting. They patiently wait. If you watch their rallies, it's not one two done. On a very rare occasion, it's it's. Um, a quick point. They play long points. They wait. They like lure in their prey, and then they they go for the win. So, um, hopefully, that that's my aspiration is to uh, be as patient as they are. Now, talk about the the competition and uh, yourself uh, playing tournaments and uh, picking partners. Playing, uh, you enjoy playing singles as well as doubles. I love singles. I mean, coming from tennis, it's it's only you out there. So you've got to to do your best. No one's going to pick you up. No one's going to pull you down. It's it's you. You've got to come up with the good. So I love it uh, for that. Doubles I love because you have to know how to work with a team. You know, um, it, you've got to be able to play uh, well with someone else. So I often play with Scott Golden. Um, he and I have had our struggles on the court, but ultimately I know our goal is the same and it's to, to improve ourselves and, and I'm able to play with him off the court. Uh, we drill, we spend time, so there's there's a comfortable connection there on the court. But I, he and I both have played well with others and um, you know we'll continue to play together and with others throughout the year. For the Megan Hall here at Inside World Pickleball, talk about the biggest difference in singles you know, versus doubles because you, know, you look at the singles game in pickleball and most people are gravitating to the doubles, especially as you get older. But as far as the game itself, what's the strategy level for playing a singles match against a high level competition? Uh, honestly, I've, I've, I came into it thinking that um, you've got you've got to get to the net. But some of these high-level players have incredible passing shots. So you really have to be smart and wait for an opportunity to come to the net. So if you get a good uh, return down the line or cross court and you're pulling that player off the court, that's the time to come in. But I think as much as you can getting to the net, but but being smart about when you're approaching the net um, and for the put away because it's very difficult to put away the ball from the baseline. Absolutely. Now who's who's your toughest competitor? Who's your toughest person to play at, in singles but all, and also in doubles? Leia Jansen. <laughs> I think I've lost to her three times, maybe four. Um, she's a phenomenal player. I know she puts in a ton of work off the court. I know she's been training with Tyson McGuffin so um, that should tell you everything that she's, you know, one of the up and coming players that I think we're going to see a lot from in singles and in doubles this year. Um, and so, so far she's been my, my toughest opponent. Um, and I wish her the best. She's, she's a really nice girl and, uh, you know, we're going to see big things from her this, this year. How's 2021 looking for you now? Is this a full-time profession where you're going to be able to gravitate, make a living and you've devoted to make this a full-time uh, career? So tennis is really my full-time job. I, I teach tennis and I love it. I love my kids. Um, but I would like to incorporate pickleball more and, and maybe make that my full time. Um, it's difficult. I have a, a young daughter at home. She's three. So um, I have to balance family life, work life and pickleball life. But um, I'm planning on making it work and doing my best to, to play as much as I can, teach as much as I can and uh, have a successful 2021. Well, sounds good. And uh, I have to ask you this question because, you know, a lot of times the tennis players still s snub the pickleball players they see us coming in and they're playing tennis. Oh, come on, play a real sport. So are you still, I mean, you're in both and you're making a career out of both. You're playing both, but did you see the transition where tennis players are getting a little bit warmer and nicer to pickleball players? Yes. In <laughs> fact, the members at my club at Boca Point Country Club, you know, at first they were like, oh, we're not going to play pickleball. But I think now that they've seen me play a little bit, they're, they're a little more willing, a little more wanting to, to try it out a bit more. So I think you'll see more and more tennis players still play both but gravitate more towards pickleball now i hope there's ro there's room in your heart for both i can i'm a, a true testament to that absolutely well thanks megan good luck this year on the tour and we look forward to seeing much more of you thanks carl megan hall here at inside world pickleball
Discover the plus in 55 plus living at Crestwind Palm Beach. Located in Westlake, Florida's newest city, Crestwind Palm Beach is a fresh new home choice designed for the next generation. Crestwind Palm Beach is a 55 plus community for those who thrive on a happy, healthy life through fitness, nutrition, and relationships. Nine decorated models now open. To learn more about all the pluses Crestwind offers, visit CrestwindPalmBeach.com. That's CrestwindPalmBeach.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. for the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week with Senior Championship Pro, Steve Kennedy. Hi, Steve Kennedy here, and I want to give you another tip of the week. I want to teach you what your paddle positioning should be. In my opinion, there's two different positions. There's one from the baseline because you know you're about to get a ground stroke. There's also another one you, when you trans transition through this area in the court, which I like to call the land of opportunity. Some people call it no man's land, but you've got to learn to play in this whole court. I teach my students that the entire court is something that you should practice on. You should be in every position on the court and learn to play there. But let's talk about paddle positioning. Baseline paddle positioning should be basically like a tennis player where the paddle is forward and out front here, right? Which enables us to move to the forehand or to the backhand side. As we're transitioning through and coming up to the kitchen line, many, many feet out in front, I believe that your paddle should be pushed forward and offset so we cock the wrist a little bit in this position here. So we, some people say it's 11 o'clock and I agree with that, but it's not 11 o'clock like this. It's actually 11 o'clock wrist cocked ball comes, the reason being I like this is because you should be predominantly hitting backhands now. So when that ball is coming in, we're going into our backhand look. Now a lot of people say, why a backhand? I want to attack with my forehand. If the ball is going to be struck with a lot of pace at you, I want you to stay in your backhand look. The reason being is, is that we have the ability to come all the way out here, come all the way across, and look at the range of motion I've had in here. The paddle can move well past the right shoulder this direction. So hence, when I'm coming in with my back in with the 11 o'clock position, I'm able to get that paddle properly. When I come to the forehand, I get stuck here with the elbow. All right. So that's why it's really important to me when you're coming in, get your paddle centered, cock it off. Paddles now at 11 o'clock. Ball's coming hard and fast. You have no time to think. You react. You go back in. All right. So the tip of the day is make sure you get that paddle at 11 o'clock. This is really the year ending for 2020. Because of COVID, we had to move this event usually in December, but because of the, the transition and having to move it, we're moving it to February, but, it's, but the rankings, everything's based on 2020 and all, and all the success that you've had been in 2020. So talk about your team. Well, some of the players uh, you want to talk about, uh, obviously uh, Tyson McGuffin. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, of course I've played him a lot. We've kind of been singles. Um, rivals, so to speak, for quite a few years now. Um, I first met him back in uh, November 2016, and uh, ever since kind of early 2017, I've seen him in a, a heck of a lot of singles finals. I'm pretty sure we're coming up on almost 50 meetings now. It's it's at least uh, 40, I know that, uh, which is just a crazy amount to play one guy, and that's just singles. Um, he's obviously uh, gotten a lot more um, good doubles results, especially this year, too. Uh, definitely come along a long way, um, both of us since meeting, a solid player all around. So definitely uh, one of my go-tos in singles and can definitely be trusted to, to handle himself in doubles and mixed doubles as well. 
and uh, Zane and Avertil, uh, you've got him uh, also on your team as well. As yeah, Zane, somebody I'm pretty excited about. Uh, kind of a, a fiery player, very what I would call uh, frenetic or spastic, which is not uh, <laughs> not always a good word to use to some, to describe somebody. But in pickleball, in this case, it, it is actually because he's very uh, unpredictable uh, to play against, but yet controlled in his own game and, and where he puts the ball. So I really like kind of the the different game style he brings and the energy he brings to a team. Uh, definitely somebody kind of new and up, up and coming. I know he's been playing for a couple of years now, but has definitely really upped both his singles and doubles results in this past year. Uh, Steve, uh, let's talk about your roster a little bit. Uh, the guy I got a chance to see up at Hilton had uh, uh, Jay Devaye, if I pronounce his name right, from France, and uh, he's definitely an up-and-comer, and, -comer and uh, I was very impressed with his game, uh, seeing him up at Hilton Head. I hadn't seen him before play uh, uh, in person, so uh, talk about Jay a little bit. Yeah, Jay was a, you know, a, a really easy pick for me when uh, Jan came to me with this concept of a, of, of a world team. Uh, Jay is a, a solid utility player, incredible singles player. He's developed substantially in uh, both doubles and mixed doubles so it, it, again he's kind of uh, one of these guys that you know can hurt you with his speed and his pace and uh, his all-around consistency um, it, it, and he's going to be one of my uh, one of my weapons for sure this uh, this upcoming month. And then you've got uh, Deco Bar, which uh, we all know has seen him uh, for quite some time from Israel so uh, Deco Bar I'm sure is uh, uh, going to be on your uh, your top list there as well. Another easy pick for me. I've had the, the luxury of playing with Deckel um, a, a few times and we've had some pretty good success. Uh, and he's another guy who uh, can play all three spots and it gives me a, you know, what will give me a break because there's not a chance I'm stepping foot on a singles court <laughs> with Ben, with Tyson, with any one of these players on his roster. <laughs> so I, I needed, I needed, a, I needed a little bit of uh, protection, um, you know, from uh, from these two singles guys, and uh, I, I thought Deckel and Jay were going to be a, a, a great fit for that, and uh, I'm going to lean on Deckel hard for the singles for sure. Your uh, your ladies now, and uh, you've got a pretty strong lineup on the ladies side, <laughs> headed by Simone Jardine from Brazil. Uh, so you can't go wrong there as the number one woman's player to maybe she'll play Ben. <laughs> That's right. I was thinking I, of I resigned. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I hit the jackpot with my women's lineup. Okay. They, they, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work them really hard. And uh, I, I am so excited for who I have uh, for my women's team for sure. And, and, you know, it's Simone for crying out loud. Uh, you know, the best player on the planet um, and uh, is so reliable, um, steady, solid, great counter puncher. She doesn't do one thing poorly. And, uh, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, and, and I'm counting on you, Simone. Uh, you know, you got to pick up some points for me here because uh, I'm up tough uh, in my session. So you're going to have to pick up the pace for me. <laughs> Ben, uh, so it looks like a tough matchup for Team World there on the, on the ladies' side, but uh, your, your roster's not too shabby either uh, for the women. Uh, starting off with Arena Tereschenko. Uh, talk, about, uh, talk about your ladies' uh, stable there, so to speak. Well, uh, hey, what's first, Arena doing I, on I your like, team I'd anyways? Like to clarify. What's Arena doing on your team anyways? <laughs> there, there's a, there, there is a reason, okay? Um, Irina is originally from Russia. In oh. her words, uh, and this is her words, not mine, in traditional uh, Russian spirit, she decided to defect. <laughs> <laughs> so she loves hashtag America, and she oh. says she's uh, American. So oh. um, I, I'm I telling you, I, I, did, some, I didn't question it any further than that. I was, I was like, in yeah, some very I, heavy duty negotiations with Arena that did not go my way. <laughs> and then I found well, out she was on your team, and I was disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> America offered her more, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to question that. As far as the player goes, um, Irina, a, I've partnered with her a good amount of times, a lot of terms with her, super fun, um, really, really good player. And she's definitely had some, um, some very good doubles results and been kind of the consistent, at least uh, finalist in the singles. So... I uh, can definitely rely on her to to really hold down the fort and 
any given division once again. You guys both have great teams, a lot of great players, and it's a, it's like an all-star cast. So, uh, Jan, thanks for putting this together. Take care, awesome. guys. Thanks right. a lot. Thank and that's this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. I'm Carl Foster with Melissa McCurley. Carpe Dinkum. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high-interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida.